guest today is Carol Campbell. Carol was named one of the six top personal branding experts in 2022 by the American Reporter. The second edition of her book, LinkedIn for the Savvy Executive, see, LinkedIn for the Savvy Executive, received Book Authority's Best LinkedIn Books of All Time Award of all time, can you believe that? And has been chosen by the C-Suite Network as one of the top 100 best business books. In addition to her one-on-one -on -one executive branding work with C-Suite leaders, Carol is a popular speaker and member of the National Speakers Association. Carol, welcome, thanks for making time today. I'm so delighted to be with you, Jeff. And folks, we're gonna be talking about, dare I say, could you, could you guess? LinkedIn, let me bring that back a little bit. Uh, here, here, here. Yeah, that's better. <laughs> Even better. We're going to be talking about LinkedIn. The book is about for savvy executives. We're going to widen that a little bit uh, to make sure we're covering mistakes for all of you. Uh, and uh, maybe I could just start by asking, tell me about some of the egregious mistakes people make on LinkedIn that you've identified. Okay, I think the most important mistake is that they don't take it seriously. They write LinkedIn um, profiles like they write a fill in the blank test, but it's really an essay test. And in order to bring our best, we have to plan and be intentional about what we want to say about ourselves so that we can be memorable. I know that every LinkedIn profile that's really memorable starts from right here in your heart center. And another word for that is your personal brand. So I've developed three signature questions that I use every time with my clients to help identify their brand. And I wanted to share them with your audience today because I know the people that are listening really, really need to make an impression in order to shine while they're looking for their next position. Excellent, thank you. So what's the first question they have to ask themselves? First question is, what are the three things you want to be known for? Now, it's really important that we select no more than three because three is automatically memorable. That's why preachers and teachers and authors and um, orators have used the formulation of three forever because it makes things stick in our heads. But if we want to communicate more things, um, you've probably seen those headlines with six different things in the headline. Instead of looking flexible and infinitely eligible for your next job, you look unfocused. And when we're unfocused, we're not anybody's best solution. It's interesting. So I, you know, yes. Human nature, with the exception of people who post things about listicles, you know, those, you know, 10 ways that you can yes. have great breath. Um, <laughs> 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 Sorry, I couldn't resist like something ridiculous like that. But unless you, someone's doing a listicle, three is really about it. Like if you even think about memorizing numbers, like we're really tapped out at this point with the number of numbers we can repeat. Um, so three things that you want to be known for is the first right. question. Okay. And my second question is, what are your differentiators? What are your superpowers? You know, a lot of people have the same um, job title, but each person brings their own personality and experiences and ways that they think. And I'd like to recommend that if your audience does not know what their differentiator is, they should do a little 360 review, just short. What is it that you come to me for? You know, what is it that you count on me for? What is it that I contribute in a different way than someone else? And it, I'm, I'm going to talk to you there, because know? that idea of what you're counted on for, Yes. Uh, and they come to you for um, it's great stuff uh, because yes. for most people they just think about doing a job you know i've got a job i do what they tell me to do right. even with the senior leaders you know, they've got a plan for the year uh, mm -hmm. or the next few years they've broken it down to different parts of the project plan 
And then there's all the other stuff that's in their job yeah. too. That's almost more important for this than anything. Absolutely. You know, um, our specific skills can be learned, but the way that we approach things is uniquely ours. And so um, some of those differentiators may be even how you think, how you connect dots differently than other people. So the third question is, what are your key words? And this is important because LinkedIn is a search engine and what it eats for breakfast is keywords. <laughs> so we want to make sure that the words that are really the words that you would search for someone just like us, that those words appear on our profile over and over and over, not in a um, me mechanistic way, but when we write, we will write using those keywords because they describe who we are and what we do. So those are my magic three questions that um, always help me to center a LinkedIn profile um, so that it is memorable. I use the building blocks that I get from that in the headline, in the about section, and especially in the skills section. So um, if people would start by thinking, really being intentional about what they want people to remember about them, and they use this formulation to help them with that, I know that they will have a more memorable profile. So it sounds like, in addition to not taking LinkedIn seriously, they approach it, their profile in a chaotic kind of way that doesn't really promote themselves and their individuality in a way that makes themselves attractive to people. And I say attractive, not because you're supposed to be good looking, <laughs> although you know, that's always an advantage in photographs, <laughs> but uh, from the sense of attracting people to you. Absolutely. But you want to have discover you as well. Right, right. Good. What other mistakes do people make with well, LinkedIn? One that has absolutely nothing to do with words is their photo. Now, the worst mistake of all is to have no photo of yourself on your profile. Um, it's like having um, your house on the market and having an open house um, notice in the paper with no picture. Automatically, we think, what is wrong with this house that they won't show a picture? And that's what we think when we see no picture at all. But um, the other thing is you can have a picture and a really bad one. Um, you can have your spouse's hand on the shoulder. Well, I was actually thinking of the old shoulder pads photos. <laughs> oh, absolutely. You can be obviously attending someone else's wedding and, you know, you've, you're cropping out people and it's not even a correct headshot. So it should be a headshot. It should be done by a professional photographer whose specialty is headshots. It's really important to um, be your best because once you have been found, you are found with 10 other people in a column and their pictures and their job titles or their, their headlines. And really every person will pick the person with the most genuine smile, with the most light in their eyes, the person that has the most animated natural face. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking clown. I'm talking, you know, does this person look like they came for business? Are they looking at you? Are they smiling? Do they look like they're ready for your job? I'm going to sneak in one thing here because you mentioned it in passing. Someone told me that they had spoken to someone on LinkedIn and they want a photo where you're looking at the camera. Yes. Not that you're looking to a side because that's not going to work for them. They disadvantage responses of photographs, of people with photos where they're yes. not making eye contact. So just be aware that if you're right. not looking directly at someone, not good. Now, no. going past that, as you say, the friendly yeah. look, 
the one where you've Absolutely. got the congenial smile on your face. Right. I know we, we had a technical issue when we first started recording this. <laughs> and when I asked Carol to reschedule, she went to my scheduling page and she wrote back to me saying, you've got a, such a, a warm, engaging photo there, which I happen to also use on LinkedIn. And it does make a difference in how people see you. So recognize if you've got the scowl on your face, <laughs> yes. as some people do, yes. and that's men and women, by the way, the scowl does not work. No. The annoyed look doesn't work. Um, there's a lot of non-friendly looks that hurt you because who wants to reach out to someone who's got a puss on like that? <laughs> yes. So, and, and what you put on, it matters. You know, it's not that um, everyone needs to look like they are um, going to have a board meeting and they're all in their ties. If if that's not the kind of job that you have, uh, you don't need to look like that. But you do look, need to look ready for your work. Whatever Agreed. that is. And, and I'll also mention that um, that um, banner hair line, the banner, banner would be. Hair. The banner behind you, yes. Uh, yes. Be behind your profile picture, can be you in action in some way. So the person who's speaking to a group uh, or is presenting in a situation, great photo if it's done oh, well. Yes. But in your headshot, no, doesn't work. So reserve that for the banner uh, photo uh, and use that to demonstrate particularly for those of you who are senior leaders, demonstrate your authority. Absolutely. It looked like you were about to say something. I'm sorry. Well, are, are you looking for other things that people do of wrong? Course. Oh, of course. Okay. Here's number three. They have too little text to rank well on a keyword search. So um, these are, this is especially for the people who have no about section or whose about section is this big, or who have no accomplishments or any text under each of those um, positions that they've held over the years. Those people who think, well, you know, this is safe. All I have to do is put in um, what my title is and that'll stand for what I did. Well, no, you have to write to the margins almost in order to be found on a keyword search. And that is um, each section in LinkedIn has a specific character count or number associated with it. The headline is 220 characters. So whereas um, most people's headline is auto-filled by LinkedIn and it's just their job title and their company, we can go beyond that and add what value we bring what um, effect we have or how we achieve our success. Whatever it is, we want to add value to that. And we want to do it without um, using a thousand um, pipes or slashes um, and listing six things. That's not it. We want to share with people how we add value in that section. And then the about section, it's 2,600 characters. That's five paragraphs. So if you're writing two sentences, you're missing the boat because the LinkedIn algorithm, um, one of the drivers of that is the number of times the keyword that the person is searching for appears on your profile. And um, that's really- I'm not looking for a job. Why should I put all that stuff in there if I'm not looking for a job? <laughs> If you're not looking for a job, you are always open to great opportunities for new clients, new customers, new projects, um, the possibility to serve on a board. Um, it doesn't have to be that you're looking for a new job in order for you to benefit from being intentional and writing to the margins. Someone I know said many years ago, the person who gets ahead isn't always the smartest. They don't always work the hardest. Although those are great qualities to possess, people get ahead by being alert to opportunity. Sometimes 
on a rare occasion, they're internal to their organization. Most of the time, they're external. So if you're hiding yourself by not providing data there that LinkedIn can uh, come up Bye. with in search, you're invisible. That's not the point of LinkedIn. You want to be found. Uh, and with 800 million people on the platform at this point, you know. It's a high bar. It's, right. It's a very high bar. And if you're hiding yourself or your firm is demanding that you hide yourself, problem for you. Because you know you're not going to be there for the next 20 years of your life, right? <laughs> Probably not. And, you know, um, it used to be many, many, many years ago that people would work for one company for their career. And that is just not the reality these days. Um, companies are not um, willing to carry someone forever. Things come and go and um, people change positions for all right. kinds of reasons. Some of them under their control and some of them very much not under their control. But um, to be prepared always is a great idea. Agreed. You know, folks, you may think you have a permanent position. You don't. You have a full-time position where there's an expectation of a certain number of hours. And, you know, as Lord knows, so many of you discovered in one recession or another, your permanent position wasn't so permanent, was it? So put yourself in the position to be discovered and have opportunity to land in your lap rather than waiting from one job search to another and lurching from one search to another and not doing anything to build up your network, not doing anything to really promote yourself. Do the thing so that you're discovered. What else do people do wrong? Huh? 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 Tell me more. Oh, well, they might have only a few skills. LinkedIn gives us the opportunity to list 50 skills. And it's a wonderful exercise that I use with, with my clients. We look at what skills are actually on that inventory? And they are so surprised to see that they have skills that they haven't used in 20 years. That's something that they delegated down several uh, years ago. Um, they have old skills, um, skills that no longer apply in the world of work. Um, unless you are an entry-level employee, um, really having Microsoft Word as a skill Honestly, you know, that's, that's a given that we know how to use these tools. So um, it's important to make sure that the skills that are listed are listed at the level that you do them. For instance, a national sales director having sales on his or her profile, it's, it doesn't have the punch that, you know, um, leading sales teams has. Um, it's, it's at the level that the guy who comes with the pizza coupons to your door, that's sales. Um, and so it doesn't describe what the national sales director is doing. And so make sure that the skills that are listed are listed at your level. Um, they've changed the skills in two ways. Now the top three skills that are listed are flags. They are... Um, they have an extra weight in the algorithm, we think, and um, they should communicate to the people that are looking, what are the top three things you do? What does that sound like? That sounds like the three things you want to be known for. So make sure that those things align. When we align our message, we win. We are memorable. So, um, Make sure that you're, um, oh, I was saying that the skills had changed in two ways. So one of them is the, that the three First things three. are important. Okay, the other is that the skills are much deeper than they used to be. Um, years and years ago, we would pick leadership, you know, check. Now there are 15 flavors of leadership that you can select. And each one of them has more than one keyword embedded, like um, clinical leadership, technical leadership, cross-functional team leadership. So when you buy 
<laughs> you know, just by selecting um, a skill that has multiple keywords in it, you get a bargain. You get cross-functional and team and leadership. Pow, pow, pow. That's, you know, a bargain. And so when I am maximizing somebody's ability to be found, we work a lot on this skills section. So, so you know, folks, if you haven't heard me say this, I was among the first 10,000 people on LinkedIn. So I remember when functions get rolled out and you know, I used to do recruiting and did it for many years. And I would see people endorse me for system development life cycle. I'm going, what? The? <laughs> and I'm, I've, I've buried that. Uh, initially, I buried it and now it's gone altogether. Think in terms of purging some of these things Absolutely. that had no relevance whatsoever to right. what you be, want to be known for, uh, what you've accomplished during the last few years, like stuff that you did when you were 22, who cares about, <laughs> unless you're 23. But. You could be the best Fortran programmer ever. <laughs> ooh, ooh. It wouldn't do you any good now. So, um, you know, the, the notion that we learn new skills, that makes a difference. But the notion that you had a skill that is obsolete in the marketplace, um, you know, 40 years ago, it's not working for you. I won't decipher Fortran for those of you who don't know what it is. It's not important. <laughs> yes, it was a programming language back in the Stone Ages where dinosaurs roamed the earth and it was used in science. When Jeff and I were young. <laughs> I was never young. I've stopped being young a long time ago, but we digress. <laughs> what other things do people do wrong, you know, whether there is a leader or as a staff person with their LinkedIn profiles or, okay. or beyond? Well, I mentioned obliquely that um, we need to have something under each of our positions. And it doesn't have to be what your, or it shouldn't be actually, what your responsibilities were but actually your accomplishments. Think about the stories that you want to tell recruiters when you have the opportunity for an interview. Tell those stories. Tell the stories about um, the process that you implemented that saved money, that allowed the company to um, move forward uh, with fewer resources, getting more done. Stuff like that. Use metrics if you have them. Um, make sure that you are list, you know, using your 2,000 characters for each position, um, not for all the positions going back, because, it, you know, some things just really don't matter. But um, our most recent position and the one before that, fill them out. When we see that you have accomplished in the past, we assume that you will accomplish in the future. So listing your accomplishments is a win-win. How many characters in the about field? Do you know that offhand? 2,600 characters. So that's five paragraphs in the about field. Excellent. And folks, I'll just encourage you, if you're actively looking for work, put your email address in there. Make it oh. easy for people to contact you instead of spending an in-mail to do it. Uh, if they do it, they probably haven't looked at your profile. <laughs> but if you have your email address, you're saving someone $15-ish uh, to reach out to you. Uh, so since you're actively looking, why are you, making, why are you being hard to get? <laughs> Be easy. And then once it's gone, and once you've found something, you can take it out. Um, and for those of you who are concerned about crackpots uh, or perpetrators on LinkedIn, have a fake email address that fo forwards to your real one. So this way you can cut it off uh, when your search is done. A search email address. <laughs> it really works. It's not fake like that. It's not your primary. Right. And thus, particularly for women, if this is a concern of yours, oh, you're very good looking. I'd like to meet you. And I've got a, I, I need sponsorship for my visa. Uh, as happens, <laughs> as happens. I, I, yes, it does. I, I get those. Everyone gets those among the women. Um, and I'll just simply say, uh, and, and now men are getting it 
from Asia, but that's a different thing. Uh, <laughs> it's you you want to be contacted, but you don't need to expose yourself in this uh, to any sort of danger or nonsense. You can cut it off. You can report people into LinkedIn um, and block them. Uh, there's lots of different ways that you can protect yourself from you know nut jobs like these. Absolutely. So I wanted to mention where they should put their email. So there are at least two places that I recommend. One is in the contact information so that if someone connects with you, um, they will be able to see your email address. But since you are looking for a position, I put it in the about section at the end. Some people put it in the about section at the beginning. Either way, um, in the about section is a place that recruiters are going to be looking. And um, so I give them the sales first, you know, all about me. And then here's, here's my contact information. Excellent. And I know there's a million more things that people do wrong on LinkedIn. I've created a lot of videos about that. What else do you think we should highlight today about what they do wrong? Okay. Well, um, not having any recommendations is a problem. Um, I recommend to people that they seek from someone who supervised them at some point in their career, um, a recommendation, not from your current supervisor because that's not oil, um, but um, ask someone that you work for in the past to give you a recommendation. Think about um, someone who worked at your same level in your same company or alongside you on a project, but in a different company. Maybe, uh, you know, um, you were working across companies to do a project. That would be um, a colleague kind of recommendation. And then finally, if you have ever supervised anyone, um, look to someone who you are not currently supervising um, who might be able to write you a recommendation. So that's, um, you know, a real good one. Recommendations, you know, again, having worked in search for as long as I did, recommendations are really pivotal in how people see you. Uh, after all, these are people who, in theory, can attest to the quality of your work. I know I get these uh, messages from overseas where they want me to recommend them for something and I won't do it because I don't want to game the system. I want the system to actually work. Uh, so gaming the system, don't do it, but where you can provide recommendations and ask other people who are your first level connections to recommend you for things, it helps you. It really does, because the recruiters are trying to figure out who to contact. And if they are looking at your profiles, they'll eventually get to if you respond to them. Mm -hmm. They'll see that you know, someone who knows your work will speak to your successes for them uh, or how you help them or the benefit that you bring to an organization. We're back at the idea of social proof and how you as a professional right. are receiving a testimonial from someone uh, as not just you telling people that you're great. Other people are telling them that you're great. Right. It's a wonderful thing. Um, one other thing that I would like to suggest is a mistake on LinkedIn is not on the, the profile itself. But this mistake is not using LinkedIn in its functionality, not contributing to that homepage feed. When we don't do that, we are not top of mind. Um, nobody thinks of us um, when an opportunity that's right for us comes. But if you have been nurturing your contacts by um, you know, cheering and um, commenting on their posts, that keeps you top of mind. It affirms others, which is a win, and they remember you, which is another win. And when we are remembered, we are referred. And 
what better way to get into um, an interview situation than to have been referred by a friend. So those people that have never commented online, whose, whose idea of commenting is to do the little thumbs up. Thumbs up is, is lovely, thank you very much, but and you need to comment. And the comment needs to be better than um, way to go. Um, it's supposed to be at least five words to like count on LinkedIn in terms of go. three. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Even way to go, Carol Kemmerer doesn't really count, I don't believe. Um, the, the idea is that you want to add value. So if you're commenting on someone's article, think about if it's a listicle, think about saying, you know, I really liked point number three because I've seen that time and again in my own company, blah, 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 blah. Or um, pick a quote and attribute it to the person who wrote the article. Um, you know, put it in quotation marks and um, uh, do a double dash. Sage advice, Jeff Altman. Um, make it so that the person knows that you commented. And the easiest way to do that is to tag them or Absolutely. use the reply feature to their post. Because uh, I always think, especially for senior professionals, you don't have time. So how can we do things that optimize your time? I know the easiest thing is really sharing something that you read that has value uh, and working up from there. So if once a week you share an article, throw in a comment about it and why it had meaning that's about one paragraph long, right. maybe you tag a few people that you know in it, which is better yet because they'll you're giving them the opportunity to comment on yours which linkedin likes that much more pick four or five people rotate them and you know get yourself out there so that linkedin wants to refer you because you're an active member uh, of the platform uh, yes. and they want to do that what else haven't we covered yet that we really should amongst the mistakes people make well, here's one that is um, specifically for people who have been on LinkedIn forever and ever. Ooh, me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you need to go to your um, edit your public profile and URL section. Now that you will find that to the right of your profile. So you're looking at your profile page right to the right, right at the top. It says edit your public profile and URL. So what I want you to do when you do that, uh, number one, if you haven't uh, ever edited your URL, you're right there. This is your opportunity. And um, this is more important now than it has been before because people are typing their LinkedIn URL in chat um, apps on Zoom. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like we're all in a big room and people say, well, you know, uh, drop your LinkedIn URL in here and, you know, let's have some connection. Well, you know, other people are writing um, Ted Smith change, um, you know, in there. Uh, well, it starts LinkedIn.com slash in slash. And then the person's name and a keyword or the person's name and their um uh, academic credentials or, um, a, you know, something exciting like that. And other people are typing, you know, Ted Jones, one, two, nine, seven, CZ, X, you know, and they're trying to remember what their LinkedIn um, profile um, URL is. And it's, it's just ridiculous. But especially when you're in job search, if you customize your URL, you could put it on your email signature block at the end of every email. You can do that in almost every LinkedIn or almost every email program it has a little way that you can um, set up something that looks neat um, and um, make sure that you have a tidy URL um, that doesn't take up a whole line. And um, 
after you've customized your LinkedIn URL, go down and you will see, um, you know, all every section of the LinkedIn profile and little slider buttons. The slider buttons have things turned off and turned on. Now, the, the mistake that I see most commonly with um, senior leaders, if they're going to make a mistake like this, it is that they, back when they joined, they turned their picture off because in that time, it was scary to have our picture online and people didn't do it. And so many people turned their, um, they turned all kinds of things off. They turned their picture off, which is what you can see. But they turned off things that you can't see, like they turned off their experience or they turned off their skills. Well, the LinkedIn bots cannot read something that you've turned off to public. So make sure that your picture and every section of the LinkedIn profile shows to the public when they are looking at your profile. So that's, um, you know, it's kind of a global thing, but you just want to make sure that you haven't hidden away part of yourself that you thought was important. And it probably was important to you way back then to keep some things secret. Now, if you're keeping it secret, you're not going to be found on LinkedIn because the bots can't read your profile. I'll also mention a new feature that came on recently that on your profile, not in this area, but in the standard profile area, if you click on the pencil related to your heading area, you can now add a personal website in. Uh, so this way, if you want to direct people to your site for more information, you can tell them for more about me and then direct them to the website itself. It's a nice little add-in. Carol, we could go on for a long time because, like I said, there's a million mistakes people make. How can and people so find out? Know all about them. <laughs> I know I made some of them many years ago, but no matter. How can people find out more about you and the work that you do, Carol? Okay. Well, the key to it is to know how to spell my name, and that <laughs> is a challenge. So, um, you can see it down at the bottom of my picture here, but it's Kemmerer. K-A-E-M-M-E-R-E-R. -E -E -R. Twice as many letters as you need. Um, if you're looking on LinkedIn and you, um, you know, are looking for Carol K-A-E, you've got a good chance of finding me. And um, when you find me, you will also find that I have a, a website, carolkemmerer.com. Um, I have a um, uh bio up on c-suite network um i sell my book through my website um and uh you can find all of my material that is um my writing by using the two hashtags that i use that are personal hashtags one of them is hashtag carol kemmerer all run together and the other is hashtag little linkedin lesson which is a weekly series that I do. And, um, you know, it, it just little snippets like um, when somebody asks me a question, I think, oh, that's something that somebody needs to know. I'll write a little LinkedIn lesson. And um, it, it's just one slide and then, you know, uh, a couple of paragraphs about it. Sweet. Carol, thank you. And folks, we'll be back soon with more. I'm Jeff Alpin, the Big Game Hunter. Hope you enjoyed this interview. If you did and you're watching on YouTube, share it, leave a comment, give it a thumbs up, do something that lets people know it was worthwhile. <laughs> Notice she's holding the book up. Yay. All right. Thank you so much. Well, I'm not done yet. Got to hang in there. And I also want to remind you, I've got a lot more on my website, thebiggamehunter.us. We're in the blog. I've got thousands of posts that you can watch, listen to, or read that'll help you with job search, hiring more effectively, management, leadership, and perhaps one of your workplace issues. Connect with me on LinkedIn at linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash the Bay Game Hunter. Oh, while you're at my website, you can schedule time for free discovery calls, schedule time for coaching, find out about my courses, books, and guides. There's just a lot there to help you. Now, hope you have a terrific day. And most importantly, be great.
Take care. Thanks.